we're going to talk about today um, is an interesting concept. It's a very interesting concept about a stage or a state of love. And when I say it initially, it probably might not make sense to you, but I think a lot of people, I think everyone here on this group, and I hope you're all listening intently, um, will agree with what I'm about to say, and, and you'll be able to reconcile what you've been feeling your whole life. Um, you know, it's not too, if I could just give an example, yeah, I was just having a conversation with my sons, and we're talking about, you know, this world and dunya, and if you, if you don't expect some type of disruption to the dunya, you might as well go somewhere else because dunya is the place whereby it's the perfect setup, right? It's the perfect setup. You know, I call that, I mentioned that term today to my wife and I said, this is the perfect setup. Um, nobody came back from the dead and could tell the story. Perfect setup. No one, no one could come back. Perfect setup as you like. Ultimate perfect test. And dunya is the perfect a place to be able to test human beings. So this place is the place of suffering. It's the place of alam. It's the place of fear, anxiety, angst. It's all of that. You have to embrace it, all right? You've you got to embrace all of that. You've got to embrace it with a perspective. You say, how can I embrace it? I've been running away from my fears. I've been running away from my anxieties or whatever the case may be. Not that you could run away from your anxieties, but you certainly have to face them and deal with them. One of the states of love brings all of what I said brings us to this now. One of the states of love is suffering. Is suffering. It's called al alam. Suffering is actually a state of love. Some say, but how can that be? How can my suffering be a state of love? Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, I'm going to read this verse. He says, Wale tahinu. Allah he says, and I'll read it slowly and I'll explain it as I move along. Wale tahinu. Allah, he says, do not be weak in seeking the enemy, right? Do not be weak in seeking the enemy. In takunu, right? Allah, he says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, if you are suffering, in takunu ta'lamuna. If you are suffering, fa'innahum, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, if you could just mute your cameras for me, um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, so in this situation, if you are suffering, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says then in this situation, if you are suffering, they are also suffering as you are suffering. Look at this notion that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about. He's talking about the believers and he's talking about the believers suffering. And then he says, if you are suffering, but they're also suffering like you're suffering. But look what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says. وَتَرْجُونَ مِنَ اللَّهِ Allah he, then he, he continues on to say, and you hope from God. وَتَرْجُونَ مِنَ اللَّهِ مَا لَا يَرْجُونَ And you hope from Allah for that which they can't hope. Right? وَكَانَ اللَّهُ وَعَلِيمًا حَكِيمًا And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the knower or wise. So look, Allah he says, you're suffering, if you're suffering, they're suffering like you're suffering. But you're hoping for Allah. Look at how Allah explained the suffering as a type of thing and followed it by hope. So the scholars, what they drew from this, they said that suffering is a stage of love that it occurs in human beings, in the love of human beings for Allah. SubhanAllah. Hajib. That my whole life, I've, I've endured a type of suffering. And I never realized that that type of suffering, that this is also, also a state that I go through, which can be had for Allah Azza wa Jal. And so the scholars, they said, it inevitably, inevitably occurs in human beings, or the, the human beings love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The scholars, they also said, it can also occur in human beings, in your love for the love of other human beings, yes, but it can also inevitably occur in your love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you can go through a type of suffering or a state of suffering, which is called a state of love. And that is something that you can have for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Amazing, truly, truly amazing. Makes you think that, therefore, when you go through that suffering, that it is definitely not in vain. It is definitely not something that 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows to go unrewarded. Allah, he praises the one who goes through some type of suffering and who handles that in the best of manners, in the best of ways. Allah, he addresses and he praises that individual. Allah, he praises and gives salawat to the one who is patient in adversity. And so we see that suffering is not actually a type, uh, if you like, it's not a type of punishment provided, provided uh, that it's, uh, uh, it's dealt with uh, correctly, uh, provided that it's, it, it's, it's endured correctly, it has the right perspective attached to it. Um, and you see that even in this state, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, don't be faint in seeking out your foes. Now, obviously, there's a context also to that. But then if you are suffering, they're also suffering as you are suffering. And you hope though, but you hope for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that for which they cannot hope. Amazing verse. Amazing, amazing verse. It says Surah An-Nisa, verse 104. For those who want that reference, it's a really significant and important reference uh, to make and a, a verse to rely upon um, in those states uh, whereby when you do encounter those very, very difficult times, uh, then you can fall upon verses like this. All right. The other thing and the other point that I wanted to talk about um, is a very important, um, uh, an, another important stage um, of love. It's a state and another stage that a person can potentially go through is change, right? Taghir, right? Taghir, that's with a rain. So change, as the scholars they have said, is also a stage of love. What does that mean? What does that mean? How, how, how is change a state of love? Where do we get that from? Is there a proof from it in the Quran? There is. And it is something that both in the human love for God can have and the human love for other humans can have as well. So it's not only... Uh, intra but inter um, it's the love that we can have for each other and it's the love that human beings can also have for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it's the stage of love change is a state of love how explain give me an example let me give you the example Zuleikha Zuleikha if people remember who Zuleikha was was obviously the wife of Aziz the minister and at that time, uh, she uh, accused, um, uh, at that time, there was some type of betrayal with, uh, with Yusuf, Ali, his son, the Prophet Yusuf. But even though she attempted to, uh, to lure uh, Yusuf, Ali, his salam, into, uh, into a, 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 a disobedient act, and this story obviously is mentioned in the Quran, we all know the story of Yusuf. What happened is, at the very end, she did not betray Yusuf, right? She didn't betray him. So this woman who attempted to lure Yusuf into a, a unlawful act, in the end, she didn't betray Yusuf and she admits that it was in fact her wanton behavior um, that, that caused um, the whole scene. She admitted it was an admission. And Someone might say, well, where's the proof? Look what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran. Allah, he says, this is what Allah, he's talking about uh, her response, right? And, and, and it is said, right? So he knows, so Yusuf knows, this is what she's saying. So he knows that I did not betray him. So he knows that, even though that this situation happened, right, that I didn't betray him in his absence. So even though he was at his absent now, and I can say whatever I like, I'm not going to do that. I didn't betray him in his absence. So And so she makes it very clear that I'm not going to betray him in his absence, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala truly doesn't guide the guile or the treacherous. What the scholars they said here is they said that, in fact, that you find that that love 
that she had for Yusuf changed her, caused the change. And so you see now the this notion of being changed, absolutely being changed from the inside out through that faculty of hub and love. And why the scholars have utilized that example? Because she changed, even though he wasn't there, but she was changed by her love for him. And whether, even in his absence, regardless, the change had taken effect. Hence, the scholars, they said, change is a state of love. Remember the story of Yusuf. Again, just to recap, she did not betray him, even though she tried to lure him into disobedience. And even in his absence, even when he, when he was in prison, she did not betray him. She admitted it was her own fault. And Allah, he mentions the words in the Quran that, so he knows I'm not going to betray him in, even in his absence. So scholar says changing and change is a state and stage of love that human, human beings go through. And it can happen between human to human, but also between uh, a human being and the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when people love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they submit. What do they submit to? They change. They turn. They forever turn, right? And that means that the change takes place in the soul of the human being. So when change takes place in you, understand that you are going through the stage of uh, or change, and that is a stage of love. That is a stage of hub. That is a stage of love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because change has taken effect in your soul. So the scholars, they said, Therefore, this is, this is a, a signal, an indicative of your love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Very important that when you understand that when you're changed, that means that something has changed in your ruh, something has changed in your soul, and that is a state of love. So you can sort of get a measure or a reference to say that I am at this point um, in my life, or I hope to be at this point in my life, whereby I, I am undergoing that type of change. And we see that even from human to human, where Zulaikha, she mentions that I'm not going to betray him even in his absence. Um, and so he knows that, right? So change had taken place in her. And even in his absence, she was not going to betray him. And Allah, he mentions this in the Quran. Allah, he, very hajib, beautiful, beautiful uh, verses that allude to subhanAllah our connection with each other and our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we can extrapolate very, very clearly uh, in the Quran. Okay, the last one that I'm going to do with you um, is uh, is a last one, and it's probably one of the good ones. Uh, the one of the the, the 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 you know the ones that this life and this world and this time period needs really much so. And it's al haja ila al khalwa, which is the the need uh, for seclusion, the need for seclusion, right? Al haja ila al khalwa. Someone says, but hang on a second, you know how can how can al haja ila al khalwa? How can that be a type of love or a stage of love? How can that be a stage of love? And the scholars, they in fact they do talk about it as a stage of love because there are verses in the Quran that do talk about it in such fashion. Um, and having a need for it, and I should mention that point, having a need for seclusion, being a stage of love. And, and that can be, again, intra and inter. So we human beings can have that for each other, but also uh, in, terms of, uh, in terms of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if we look at, again, we turn to Surah Yusuf. And Yusuf, he mentions in the Quran something profoundly significant. You know, Yusuf, he never says about the prison that when he was in prison, he never said, ahsanu ilayya. He never said, prison is better for me. He said, asijnu ahabbu ilayya. He said, asijnu ahabbu ilayya. In other words, he said, prison is dearer to me, not better for me. There's a, there's a, a very significant word difference in those words here where he says prison is better so what does a uh, uh, dearer sorry he said prison is dearer what that means is uh, and as the scholars they make very very uh, clear um points about his words is that he was eager to enter the prison 
because one can presume uh, very clearly that he loved to invoke Allah without any disturbance, without any disturbance. And hence, what the scholars, they talk about having the need for seclusion is actually a stage of love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, I've heard from a couple of people. I have. I've heard from many, many people. Some say, you know, during seclusion or during, you know, isolation or a lockdown, I, I'm drawn near to Allah and I feel I need this and I feel I have to have this. When you're there, you, you can rest assured that this is also a stage of a love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if, you're, if you feel that, or you feel the need for that seclusion, then you are passing, inshallah, through a beautiful stage. And don't uh, let it uh, escape you. Uh, don't let it uh, run free. You know, hold on to it, grasp it as hard as you can, as much as you can. Um, because the dunya is always going to be there waiting for you. And so this is critical that we, we hold on to it as much as we can. So we see in this regard, again, as we said, that the need for seclusion uh, is 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 a stage um, and a state uh, of love um, that that a person can have for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but also that human beings can have in their love and uh, we see the example uh, in Yusuf uh, alayhi salam and so you know that that could also apply to you know you do your morning afghar you know you wake up in the morning you do the you do your fajr um, you do your your wooded, um, you know your kulu Allahu ahad falak nas three times each ayat al kursi, the dua, uh, the the um, the praises on Allah subhanahu wa taala, the tahlil takbir, uh, and so on and so forth. Do that obviously fajr and maghrib. These moments are your moments. This is the the need the haja ila al khalwa. This is also a type of seclusion that you need to have. And we've, we've discussed that in, in, in detail. Sometimes human beings just need to withdraw and they need to withdraw from the spotlight. And that yields something that brings, produces something in the heart, which is very, very important, very important, very critical um, uh, and uh, significant in the lives of all of us. We live in dunya and dunya means that it is the place, the perfect setup for you to be trialed, examined, and like I said, I was telling my wife today, you know, this is a perfect setup. Nobody ever came back from the dead um, and told us how it was, other than uh, with a surety what we know through the prophetic tradition. That's it. That's it. That's, that's what we have through the prophetic tradition. But in the sense that somebody passed and in the sense that somebody came back, um, you know, if, if, you, if you say that this happened um, and that was the case, um, and we're not talking about, obviously, you know, when the Dajjal comes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows this, you know, where the Dajjal performs extraordinary um, practices. And we're not talking about that, obviously, right? Because these are all through Qadr Allah, and that's also different to what we're talking about. So, but the respected brothers and sisters, these are the types of ways that human beings can love. And these are the various stages of love. As we said, we just discussed three stages of love today. The ones that we did discuss are the suffering. Uh, we discussed the taghir, and we did. Uh, we also discussed uh, the um, uh, the haja uh, ilal khalwa. Now we can elaborate on these in great detail, um, but I did promise that this would be a short um, lesson, and uh, and I, I want to keep it concise. I'm going to take the recording, obviously, um, of these lessons and i'm going to make them available so if you ever want to refer to them you can i think it's important um and uh allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best